Hey guys, what's up? It's Tim, and I'm just checking in with a quick video to show you the answer to this week's challenge. So we've been working on the React course and teaching people how to do secure authentication using React components and Firebase. Uh, everybody seems to have gotten a handle on that. I'm going to dive into one of our examples today to show you uh, how we would solve this problem of making the registration button and the login button go away when the person is already logged in. Now to do it, let's take a look at what Justin has been working on here. Okay, so here's Justin's site and uh, let's, let's bring it up here in CodePen so we can see the full thing. Looks like he's working on some kind of a new site here, a pretty cool theme. He's done a little bit of work on his navigation and styles here, it's starting to really shape up. So let's head on over to the account area here. And right here, oh well, will you look at that? It looks like Justin has beat me to it. <laughs> Good on you, Justin. I was about to show how to solve this problem, but it looks like Justin's already gotten to it. Um, so, so the problem we were working on here is that the log out button was appearing at the same time that the login and registration we're still there. So here, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna log out, and I'm gonna register as a new user here, and this is, this is pretty cool. This is secure authentication using the Firebase API. And uh, this is really necessary if you're gonna build any kind of an online community or actual useful functional application here. So here's how it works. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna register as Timbot3 here. I'll just make something up. There we go. And I'm going to tab down to the password here, field here. There we go. And I'm going to attempt to register. Now, when I register, it should recognize that I'm now authenticated. And we should see both the form as well as those two buttons go away. And let's see if Justin's managed to do it. There we go. And boom, there it is. So, you know, we can see we've got a little bit of work to do on the placement of this logout button here. It needs to be styled like the others. But if I click it, boom, form comes back again. So this is pretty much perfect. As far as the JavaScript functionality goes, this is exactly what we want to see. So let's see how Justin got to this. If we dive into Leaflet over here and we take a quick look, uh, we can see in the first round of feedback for Justin, uh, a lot of things are already working. So that's great. He's got the registration working. He's got the uh, log out working. And that brings the form back just like we saw. And he's also got error handling in there, which is pretty good because it's pretty easy to mistype a password or something like that. So he should have error handling both on the registration process as well as on the login. And we checked that and both of those are looking pretty good. At the time that we got the feedback here, um, he hadn't yet figured out how to make the, the buttons go away. The, the form fields are going away, but not the buttons. So let's, uh, let's see if he was able to implement the feedback or if he has done it uh, another way here. So heading back into the code. Let's go down a little bit here. And uh, specifically, I want to take a look at, well, here, let's walk through it a little bit. First off, we know that in React, you build a React application by nesting components inside of components. So if we take a quick look here, well, here's the main component, the app component. And uh, inside of here, we can see that it's got a callback called the on auth change. And then right down here, Here's a hash router. So we're using the uh, most up-to-date version of the React router library here. And right here, we've got a path to account that is going to take us to the settings loader area. So let's take a look for the settings loader and see what's going on in there. Just very quickly. There we go. So the settings loader is going to load up here we go, is gonna load up into that app component. And inside, because this is uh, what we call a connected component, which is another one of the things we learned, I think, in lab three, uh, right down here, we're going to find a render function. 
Let's look for that. Here's our render right here. And inside of that, he's got this login form component. So he's done something pretty smart here. He's using his connected component to get the data, but then he is creating a, a somewhat less smart component in the login form, which will make the login form a lot more reusable if he wants to use this across lots of different projects. So down here, we have our login form, and because we can see that it's not actually extending React component, this is what they call the dumb component, or presentational component, if you want to be a little bit more accurate here. And right down here, ah, yes, look. Yes, he's done something smart here. Uh, this looks like HTML that we're doing in here, but technically this is JSX, which means we haven't actually left JavaScript here. Now that means that we can use things like variables and we can use conditionals. So right here, he has taken the entire form, including the login button and the register button, and he's put that all inside this fields variable here. But if the person has authenticated, this props.logedIn is gonna to evaluate to true, and then he's just simply swapping that up for uh, that, that same variable, the fields variable, he's swapping it up for a different div. So this is what we call conditional rendering. If you want to learn more about that, the documentation from Facebook is actually quite good in this area, so I recommend heading on over to their site to learn a little bit more. Uh, we'll be doing a bit more of this in tomorrow's class as well. Um, finally, down here, we can see that inside his form, he just simply render renders that field. So very simple but powerful conditional logic. And if we take a quick look back in the feedback, that is in fact exactly what we were looking for you to do. So good on you, Justin. You, you just slid on in under the wire as I was about to make this video here. Uh, so yay, glad to see that. For all of you guys, if you haven't managed to uh, you know, find the answer to this challenge yet, take a look at um, Justin's example. Uh, Joseph also has this working. I believe Data has this working as well. So, you know, do, do browse through your fellow classmates' work there. You can learn a lot from that, even more than what I can show you. All right, so I'll look forward to the next lab where we're going to see how to capture a little bit more uh, information from the user. Things like, um, for instance, some people have been asking, well, how can I uh, you know, store something like um, uh, an avatar picture or uh, a name for the person. Right now, we've got the basic authentication working. Let's get into the database stuff a little bit more tomorrow. Okay, see you soon.